everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. I am finally getting around to using this mold. This is beautiful pentagon, I wanna say pentagon. Hopefully it's a pentagon mold from Molds and Shapes. You would have seen this recently in a huge unboxing that I did. They sent me a ton of new molds, but they also sent some molds a while back and I've just not had a chance to use them yet. These are chunky. They are 13 centimeters across and they're really deep as well. And I knew they would be perfect for this other project that I really wanted to try. So I am going to be using the Let's Resin resin in today's video, but first of course PPE. If you are new here, I don't say it enough. I should say it in every single video, but using PPE is vital when it comes to using epoxy resin. If anyone says you don't need a mask and you don't need gloves, don't listen to them. Okay. First up, I have mixed my Let's Resin epoxy resin as per the instructions and of course it is time to pour. Now I am still on the neons but I wanted to try something a little bit random, something I've not yet fully tried. Now the last couple of videos we really explored the jesmonite sandwich, like layering jesmonite between two layers of resin but that was epoxy resin and polyurethane. Um, and one worked, one didn't. What I really wanted to try was layering the eco in between epoxy resin layers. Now, I already know that epoxy resin and jesmonite work really well together when you pour them exactly the same time, wet at the same time, there's really no issues and I've never found an issue. So I figured it would be okay to back my pieces with epoxy resin, quite soon after pouring my jesmonite patterns, if you will. Um, I had no real imagery in my mind for how I wanted these to turn out. I just knew I wanted to have fun, chuck it all in and just see what the outcome is. Now the outcome, <laughs> it is as though Jackson Pollock had real fun with mushrooms. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, it's very random. It's very abstract art designs in these results. And as much as I love them, I know that some of you guys won't like them at all. And I'm very aware that a lot of the things I do, it's either your cup of tea or it's not. And that's absolutely fine. So just stay with me and let me know what your thoughts and feelings are about these pieces. First layer of resin has gone in. Now you'll see here, I have taken off my gloves. I am done with touching the silicon mold. I'm not touching the silicon mold anymore. All I'm doing here is dotting some of the Let's Resin Neon Powder into the wet epoxy resin. I, I don't know, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Um, I don't know what to expect. I don't know if the powder is gonna float away or not float away, obviously, but navigate towards the center. I don't know what it's gonna do. I don't know how it's gonna respond to the resin. Um, how, how many times did I just say, I don't know? Sorry guys. Um, but yeah, that is why I haven't got any gloves on at this point, because I know I'm not touching the mold again, um, just in case anyone was wondering. Um, then I did have some leftover resin and I did pour some in the middle and I just went over the powders. Now, remembering that these Let's Resin Neon powders are not mica, so they're not gonna, act in the same way that we might be familiar with when it comes to mica, there's a chance they will either sink or clump together or, you know, spread out. They're definitely acting differently. I, I feel like the neon yellow and the pink were spreading out more than the blue and the purple that seemed to clump in big clumps. And now it's time to layer up. So this is 24 hours later, no idea what angle I'm gonna take. I'm literally sitting here at this point in my craft room looking around me like, what can I put in these? What can I just shove in and and see how they respond or how they work together? And of course, we all know, I am a big fan of temporary tattoos in resin. I've been doing it for three years now. Um, and yeah, I figured that I would put temporary tattoos into two of them and then leave two without temporary tattoos, just to see the difference and see what I prefer best, seeing as I've not done this before with the resin background and all of that jazz. So first up, we have a beautiful dream catcher. And then this one here is like a tiger and a butterfly together. <laughs> I don't know why, tattoos are so random. Um, and this one is gonna go down into the blue and the dream catcher, which was purple in color, went down into the purple powder. Now, 
hindsight is a wonderful thing. I do feel like the dark, because the tattoos are quite dark, I think if I were to try this again, I would put them in with the lighter colours. So you definitely get that pow in your face contrast between the two. Um, either way, you can still see them and they're still super pretty. But yeah, if I had to do this again, I would put the darker tattoos with the lighter colours. Now I am just applying the tattoos to the surface of the cured resin. And then I am dabbing the back with the soaked sponge to make sure that the paper can just slide off. And these are looking so pretty at this point. I absolutely love this dream catcher. There is something about dream catchers I just find so relaxing. I don't even own one, but they're so, so pretty. I have made a dream catcher on my channel before using a wood cut die cut. Um, but yeah, that was a long, long time ago. Now we're getting random. This is totally up to you if this is the stage you want to put in but this is the stage I figured we would do our jasmineite sandwich so this is the middle layer um it's all gonna be just randomly placed no thoughts really put in behind it I'm not sitting here deeply thinking about placement and where the colors are gonna go I'm just dropping it in when you're doing things like this just don't mix too much I've I've only mixed a small amount of jasmineite or if you're using any other eco just don't mix too much because um, a little goes a long way when you're just doing splashes and lines and splodges like this. Um, but yeah, I love this neon yellow. I'm so obsessed with the neon yellow right now. Um, so excited to actually get some more because I have now run out of the neon yellow. Things got a little bit wild up in here. But yes, here we go. I'm just adding a little bit of powder down just because I can and when we can, we do. Um, not sure what impact if any at all that it is going to have on the final result when we demold but again just having fun with some lines and just going with the flow the one thing I did make sure I I, I went through with here is to clean up those edges all of that jasmineite that went out and over the edges make sure that you wipe it clean off so that in the final result it's not gonna impact the results at all so that was a really important step and I'm not sure I kept it in shot so I just wanted to say it out loud while I was sitting here thinking about it but yeah a little bit more green powder which went <laughs> massively wrong I just thought I could dip my <laughs> look at the gloves sort it out I thought I could dip my finger into the neon powder and sprinkle some on but one little dip of that powder <laughs> was so much powder. I ended up rubbing my hands together and I got that much coverage on both hands with just one finger dip in the powder. Like it's insane. I now look like the Incredible Hulk um, doing resin. But here we are. We are now backing them. So like you saw on the screen, this is 30 minutes later. After pouring the jasmine eye, it's time to back them. And I'm using um, Let's Resin, Epoxy Resin, 24-hour cure, with the White Vista Pigment. Now, the Vista Pigments are intense and beautiful. And their white is, is my go-to. And also, so is their black, the beautiful liquid pigments. They're getting backed in white because I really want the contrast. Now... I didn't go with black because I knew that if I went with black, we'd probably dull the colours. We'd maybe lose those temporary tattoos as well. They wouldn't be so in your face or so visible. Now, I already knew after filling up one of these um, coasters that I didn't make enough resin. I didn't make enough resin at all. But what you will see me doing here is going real slow. Um, epoxy resin is substantially thicker than the polyurethane that you've seen me use in the last few videos so I do really want to make sure that this epoxy resin gets into every nook and cranny and covers the coasters fully the one thing I didn't mention that is really important as well is that if you are doing this make sure that your eco whatever eco you're using doesn't go too high in the mold you don't want it to protrude out of the out of the bottom of your coasters you still want flat bottomed coasters at the end of the day so yeah just make sure that whatever you're doing don't let it go too high and make sure you shake it down a bit and get it as flat as you can before pouring the background layer um but yeah I was worried now I did have to mix up another little bit of epoxy resin here because I was very aware I did not have enough and just making sure that see the bottom right there's a gap there where the jasmineite was just a bit high 
and the resin wasn't naturally closing the gap over that little mound of jesmonite make sure you get it all completely covered now this was the next day that sent a bit that i made it really came to nothing it was a little bit a little bit ugly and here <laughs> here we have either love it or hate it our jackson pollock-esque <laughs> splashed results now you can see the powder where i've put the powder in the yellow has responded completely differently to the purple the purple has almost clumped up in places the tattoo itself, the dream catcher, so pretty. But what I really like about this one are the lines. Those lines are giving me tiger stripes or zebra stripes. Definitely zebra, I'm loving, loving. Um, but yeah, that was up there as one of my favourites. This one was a complete meh. There's no contrast in this at all. I don't like the lines that the Jesmonite has made. I love the way the yellow powder has gone in. The purple powder has clumped again, but yeah, as it said on screen, complete lack of contrast, nothing visually exciting to see in that coaster at all. And I know everyone's going to have an opinion, but this is up there. This is up there as one of my favorites. The pow, the, the, just the, the whole poof of pink powder in the middle there. Love, love, love. It looks very cloud-like, very just, yeah gorgeous love this one love there's no tattoos in here again it's literally just two colors the pink and the yellow but i think they've worked really really well together to give us that abstract pollock-esque design this one here again up there as one of my favorites it's a it's a random one you can only just really see the tiger and the butterfly again the yellow powder has made a beautiful kind of bloom in there but the purple powder well and truly clumped up and sank but also that's giving us this 3d i don't know if my camera's picking it up but where the powder has clumped and sunk it's now casting shadows over the next layer of resin that came in it's hard to explain but yeah love the stripe design on this one love the tattoos i love the randomness and now guys you know me i love any video where you can just be completely free chuck it all in be random be abstract and not worry too much about the results um but equally i know that these results are not going to be everyone's cup of tea and that's absolutely fine because not everything I ever do is ever going to like make everyone happy. But let me know which one is your favourite. The neon yellow and the pink. I think it's up there. It's definitely up there. It's got some of the orange in the back as well. I just love the way the powder just all floated out and just did some weird abstractness. I think that is the closest one to Jackson Pollock that we're actually going to get. The others are just a bit out there. This one here does nothing for me. I... I don't feel it at all. I, I don't look at it and think, wow. I look at it and think, what a mess. I don't like the Jesmonite squiggles. There's no... It's a funny one because I quite often throw Jesmonite into things like splash, splodge, splat, all of those words. But it didn't work this time as far as I'm concerned. I love this one with the Dreamcatcher because I like the order of the lines. The orange lines give it some more natural order in a way I can't explain it because you guys know me I don't have the vocabulary but it's definitely giving me zebra stripes and tiger stripes and just natural pattern um yeah love 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 this was me using a filter on my phone just a color filter because what I was seeing with the naked eye I didn't feel was being picked up in my camera um so I was trying to work out why the the, the colors weren't really matching um so yeah that was me just trying a filter but that was as close to the pink as I could see other than that this is me coming back to real color um this is just my phone showing you what yeah what it was picking up but let me know let me know if you are a random love it chuck it all in abstract kind of kind of artist or if you need absolute absolute <laughs> you need a route you need to plan your route take that route and come to a final destination and you're not a fan of the abstract art but yeah let me know if you agree it's a little bit jackson pollock um but yeah i really enjoyed this one i love nothing more than just 
being free basically with no rules. <laughs> Isn't that the dream? Isn't that the dream that we all want to be free and have no rules? Anyway, that conversation could get real deep real quick, so we won't go there. I will see you all in the next video. And thank you so, so much if you are still here. Don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe. If you have not done already, it is completely free. I will see you all in the next video.